Hello, Dr. Judy Morgan. How are you today? I am doing really, really well. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and um, having a chat about the pandemic that we're experiencing at the moment. It's, um, you know, it's like for me, it's like the yin and yang. It's like part of it's like, oh, I need to get prepared. I'm very worried. And the other part of me is going, just chill, relax. So I'm having this argument all the time. Yes. For people that don't know you, could you just explain a little bit about who you are and what you do? I am an integrated veterinarian in New Jersey in the United States. So that means that I combine holistic medicine with traditional medicine. And uh, my favorite part of treating my patients is using whole foods yeah. because so much can be done with nutrition. So I use foods, I use herbs, I use acupuncture, chiropractic. I've written four books and I speak all over the world and uh, hold seminars. And I do a lot of blogging, a lot of writing. I was the 2018 Woman of the Year in the pet industry in the US. Yes. Actually, that's, that's international. Uh, that's I was that's also, amazing. That's amazing. I, hey, let's wind that back. That is incredible. Well done, yeah. actually. Yeah. Well, and in 2019, I received a Pet Age Woman of Influence Award and the International Association of Top Professionals Veterinarian of the Year. So, uh, I, you know, I'm out there. You get those awards because you're out there educating, speaking a lot. And my awards were because of my advocacy for our pets because yeah. – um, for me, it's all about educating the consumer, the pet owner, yeah. and thereby increasing the the health and longevity of our pets. So I, I'm really passionate about keeping our animals healthy and keeping them with us for as long as possible. I We just lost two of our dogs the beginning of January, but one was three weeks shy of his 19th birthday, and the other one had turned 18 a few months before that. So if we can change the paradigm and instead of losing our pets at age 10 11 12 which we've now become to accept yeah. as normal yeah if we can change that and keep these guys around 15 to 17 years that's that's a whole new ball game Absolutely. That's, that's my goal. yeah and, and in good health at that point as well not that's just exactly. limping along living a, a decent right. life i mean as i said to you just now chicholina um died you know around the same sort of time and she just she was she had a grade five heart murmur no kneecap, she was three pounds, she had no teeth, she was she was tiny little, she wasn't blessed with the best teeth, let's put it that way. So, and she did what she wanted to do all her life, you know, 15, and she just was ill for six hours, well not ill, she just didn't eat, want to eat for six hours, and then she died. She didn't show any signs, she was running around in a field before that, bossing all the dogs about, so yeah, it's it's so important to, for us to do that. Yeah. So, you forgot something really important, you do a live, is it every single day? Oh, uh, so I have a Facebook page, Judy Morgan DVM, which is Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. If you just go to Judy Morgan, you get stuff about my kids. Um, <laughs> but uh, Judy Morgan DVM is my professional page. We have about 60,000 followers, and we try to do Facebook Live every morning, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. our time. So it's, a, it's become like a proper show. I love it. It's yeah, absolutely, I, you know, you make it, make me my coffee, having listen. It's become yeah. like my morning mantra. I should speak more on it because I, you know, I should say hello more because I put it on and I go into like, oh yeah, what's she talking about? So, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I feel like you're, like you're my best friend in my ear. It's really good. So I do recommend everybody listen. Thank you. It's yeah, it's good. really funny. People come into the office or they'll meet me at a seminar or an expo and they come up and they say, I feel like I know you because yeah. I, I, because I have coffee with you yeah. every morning. Well, we have had a hug. We met at Super <laughs> Zoom. Yes, you night, and I have. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about the pandemic. Let's talk about where we are at the moment today. Have a look at the date of, of the actual um, um, content here. So today it's a pandemic. We're talking about yes. COVID-19 um, or the um, coronavirus. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about it? Are you panicked? Are you cool? Are you in between? <laughs> I'm in between. I have to say when something like this happens, whether it's a blizzard, a major weather event, a hurricane, a, a, an avalanche, an earthquake, I become really obsessed with 
gathering information. So I've been watching this thing from the very beginning to the point of I'm really annoying my husband to death because he's kind of, he's been on the, it's all cool. It's just gonna, you know, it'll be fine. And I'm like, no, there's something bigger here. And so I've been watching from the beginning going, there's something bigger here. And so uh, I'm in the middle because I have that science brain that says, no, this is kind of a big deal. And, um, the, the big thing that people need to understand is it's not a big deal for our pets. They don't get it. Um, one dog was tested it was and they a cultured Pomeranian a Pomeranian in, in, in China, wasn't it? China. Yeah. And uh, they, with they, the owner. Cultured a, yeah. Oh, they cultured a positive, but that doesn't mean the dog is carrying it, spreading it. Our pets are not part of this. This is a, a human specific virus. So, can you know leave our pets out of the entire equation just take care of them do your normal hand washing that you would do after handling food and waste and blah 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 but you know we don't have to be surrendering our dogs to the shelter we, we don't have to be euthanizing pets um we need to just be taking regular care of our pets and care of ourselves well when this first came out and you know um in you know and we heard about it from wuhan and it was like oh my gosh you know this is what's happening you know pet owners are just abandoning their dogs and it became i mean i was at crafts this time last week <laughs> And um, this was the last day we did four days, and it was very much sort of, shall we go, shall we can't, you know, and all the rest of it. And probably, I'm really going to be honest, if it was now, a week later, I probably wouldn't go. Yeah. But a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, it, it seemed a bit more, oh, that's happening over there. But all of a sudden, you know, it just feels all a bit too real. So yes. um, I went to see um, a, a neurologist, a consultant with um, my son um, a few days ago, and her behaviour over someone coughing outside just seemed very alarming and mm. she was really you go now you go to the pod you get tested you you know she was very much like that and i thought wow and that's what got me thinking you know about yep. the whole thing it right. just feels you... like something else is going on i don't know yeah well you never know who you're sitting next to and what's going on um it it is a it's an interesting new dilemma. We've never been on, you know, social distancing and literally lockdown in our lives. My, I, I have a couple of big concerns. One is the resources available to our medical teams and the resources of medical teams themselves, because as they're getting sick and then they have to be out for two weeks, we see what's happening in Italy. There just are not enough resources. I've been reading articles about the number of uh, artificial respiration uh, machines that are available in the U.S., the number of ECMO machines that are available, and there's not enough. If we have a, a huge – and so we keep hearing about flattening the curve, and I, I think that really is important so that we – have enough equipment and enough personnel, but these personnel are going to be uh, stressed to the max. And it, it economically, it is very challenging. I'm the owner of two small businesses, and we rely on people coming through the door yeah, every, every day, day. Right, with their right. animals. Yeah. And I, I feel that we also have a duty to the public to keep our doors open because animals are going to continue to get sick. Animals are going to continue to need care. And treatment, but, yeah, continue their treatment. I would, I would really like to stress that to everybody. Keep up your appointments, or if you're really, really panicked, at least try and schedule, I don't know if you could do a Skype or a phone call with your vet or right. something, but don't just stop your treatment and, and think, oh, I can't go there, I'm too panicked, or, or ask, ask someone younger if you're worried about your age or something to take the pet Changing. for you. Hmm. We're changing how we're handling things in our office. I, I'm scheduling a meeting tomorrow with my key members to really come up with a plan. But my daughter, my daughter is five months pregnant and she called this morning and said, I need to take the cat to the vet. And I said, well, then you need to call the vet and find out how they are handling this situation. And they did exactly the plan that we are planning on using. And I think most uh, veterinarians and even a lot of pet stores are now implementing this where literally you're getting service curbside. So when you come in the parking lot, you call and say, I'm here. We go out, get your pet from you without touching you or getting close. You know, hand us a leash or hand us a carrier. We will bring the pet in. We will do everything that needs to be done. We will talk with you on the phone about what we're doing. I can do it by FaceTime. I can do it by Skype. 
whatever it takes, and then you give me a credit card number over the phone. We'll run it through the system. We don't ever have to touch or come in contact, but we can still care for your pet. And that's I amazing. That's, so is that what you're going to implement? Is that what you're going to be doing now, you think? That's, yeah. that's what we're going to. And I, I'm also going to offer my staff uh, the opportunity to opt in or opt out. So for people who are very concerned or can go without a paycheck, for however long this is, they have the opportunity to to isolate at home if they would like to. Uh, for those who need income and need to come to work, they will have the opportunity to come, but it will be under very strict uh, sanitation protocols and really minimizing. We do have two offices. One is uh, much larger than the other. I will probably close the smaller office so that we can concentrate our resources in yeah. one place. and it's one place to clean, one place to yeah. look at. Yeah, okay, fine. And we will also be doing virtual exams. So people who are afraid to leave their house even to get in their car and come to us, we will offer virtual exams. I mean, literally hold your dog up to the phone, you know, send me a picture, whatever it's going to be. We will ship a lot of medications. We do that a lot anyway because we have clients who come from so far. So you know, just call us up. We'll get your medication shipped to you. We'll get your supplements, food, whatever it is that you need. Uh, we'll be happy to bag up all your things ahead of time, put it outside for you to just pull in the parking lot and pick it up, however we need to do that. But just minimizing that one-on-one -on -one contact, I think, is important just to slow this thing down as yeah, much as we can. Uh, absolutely. And, and I mean, you must be worried as well yourself, you know, coming in contact with so many people i mean how many people would through walk through the day typically in a in a veterinary surgery you know it's a lot isn't it you know yeah it is and it kind of depends on the day uh but a lot of times we're scheduling appointments depending on how many doctors we have on but it's every 15 minutes per doctor so if we have two doctors on and you're open from 8 a.m to 8 p.m that's a lot of people walking in and out of your door and most pets bring more than one person with them so sometimes you have the whole family yeah and, and the kids are coughing and yeah, all yeah. That, i get it yeah. yeah and part of our problem is the schools have been closed so everyone has their children with them and a lot of my staff are going to need time off because they don't have caregivers for their yeah. children. So we have to make a plan, and that's being proactive, being sensible, and thinking about the future. Exactly. Um, exactly. Something I wanted to talk to you about in the future is there's, there's you and Hugh there, your, your husband. Um, you have the situation where if one of you becomes unwell, I mean, it, you know, you could have the flu. Or, exactly. Uh, so Which I, just meant my office. <laughs> So, yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying not to be, you know, alarmist and say, oh, you know, you've got COVID-19, what's going to happen? It can be really rough. You can have a rough ride with it. You know, you can get, you know, very sore throat, horrible cough, feel like you can't breathe, all sorts of things. So if one of you gets it and you're at home, what do you, what advice do you give, you know, to someone with your pets? Because you've got to keep, keep them moving and, and, and fed and all the rest of it. What can you have as a sort of contingency plan? Have you got any advice on that? Uh, Yes. Um, you know, part of the issue at our house is we live with my mom, who is 83. That's so, a worry. That's a real worry, yes. yeah. Yes. So if one of us gets sick, and it's interesting, I ran into my ex-husband in, in the parking lot of the grocery store this morning, and he used to be the head of the Department of Health for our state, and he just retired, but his wife still works for the Department of Health. And I rolled down the window and I said, hey, how worried do we need to be? And he said, well... You should be concerned, not panicked, but concerned. Right. And he, he said, but I will tell you, the best defense that we have is hand washing. And hand washing for the 20 seconds, not for the quick rinse. Not quick. The, psh, well, done. Yes. Yeah. It is. It so is proper, really, what I call need proper, proper surgery. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Antibacterial at Up least here. 20 seconds. Yeah. So yeah. tons and tons of that going on. A mask will only help if you are coughing or sneezing, it's not gonna keep you from, like we don't not all need to be walking around with masks, but if you are coughing or sneezing or ill, then you should wear one to protect, you know, droplets Everybody from flying else. to yeah. other people. Because we have eyes and things. I think people haven't worked out that we've got eyes and yeah. they can take things in as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, for our pets, and I've been getting a lot of emails from people. And one of the, the, the first emails I got, the woman had gone to the grocery store. This was last week. And she said uh -huh. there was, was no meat, zero meat in the grocery store. And she said, I cook for my dogs all the time. I need a backup plan. She said, what kibble 
could I feed my dogs? And she says, I hate to ask this because I know you are so against kibble. And I said, look, times are different right now. We've, we're in a dilemma. I said, so what I would recommend is, first of all, maybe call up one of the local pet stores and say, what do you have available? They may have frozen raw, freeze-dried raw, canned food, things that are still a little better than maybe going to a kibble. Uh, but the good news is she was at least asking me, if you had to choose a kibble, what would you choose? Yeah, and I that's gave her a good, four, mm, good stuff. I gave her four or five brains, and I said, what I would recommend is if you have to go to feeding kibble, can you put a little bit of fresh food topper on there? Can you steam some veggies? Can you add an egg? Yeah. What can you find that you could add to at least make the nutrition come up in that level yeah. just a little bit? So what would you add? So come on then, let's, let's start. So I, I love asparagus <laughs> and broccoli and greens. I'm not a massive cat carrot fan but what would you add i mean you could i was saying you know you could probably go like for a duck egg you don't have oh, to have hen's eggs right yes yeah so any kind of eggs and so i have a, a list of superfoods okay. that i tell people look if you're gonna feed kibble could you at least meet me part way and add these things so the dark leafy greens you know which leafy greens include things like broccoli so broccoli color uh broccoli uh, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, kale, collards, dandelion greens, any of that stuff. It does need to be processed in some way in order for the dog to, to really digest it. So sauteing it in a little coconut oil, running it through a food processor. If you don't have coconut oil, a nice olive oil would work. Oh, mine love it steamed. Mine all have it, their veggies steamed. They're like a bit steamed. So I do, I do just a little tiny bit of water and maybe like a little bit of goat's butter, run that through, yeah, make it all perfect. tasty. And then like, mm. yeah, you know, exactly. so this is, it's a different way. You know, you've, we've got to stretch the food. We might be using a kibble or, or a canned food and we feel a bit, it's all a bit alien to us but that's at least adding some freshness to the bowl isn't it and yes. so i love eggs i love blueberries cranberries those fresh berries if you can get them for the antioxidants and we're going into spring and summer season here so all that stuff is going to be much more abundant um, I love sardines, and so we should still be able to get sardines in a tin. Uh, or, you know, I was when we were at the grocery store this morning, I looked and I said, "Oh, look, they have these nice little packages of frozen sardines. Awesome!" So those are just oh, pumpkin, canned pumpkin, if you can get that, not the mix, just plain pumpkin, or even fresh squashes like the butternut squash. Um, acorn squash, zucchini, yellow squash, and those kinds of things. Those are all just really packed with great vitamins for our pets that can really make a difference. Absolutely, so yeah. If we're having to change what we're feeding just because if we can't get out. Yeah. So, you know, if, if we all end up like they are in Italy and Spain, like we're stuck in our houses and I don't want to be one of those people who's out, you know, stocking up on a cart full of toilet paper. I don't understand the toilet paper thing, but... No, no, I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody does. is get understanding what that was about. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's beyond yeah. me. But um, I finally made Hugh go th with me this morning. I said, honey, I, we need to have two weeks worth of stuff in this house. We happen to have a, a freezer filled with frozen raw food for our dogs. I also have cases of freeze-dried raw. I have cases of some boxed human-grade foods for them. I have cases of canned and freeze-dried raw for my cats. Just because th the interesting thing with us is we have to do weekly orders for the clinic and sometimes, and, and the distributors that we order from have minimums. So it might be to get an order. We have to have a $500 minimum. Yeah. So, so my staff will come to me and say, look, we're trying to order the food for the clinic, but we don't need that much. Yeah. I can't, what can we order to, to get up to the minimum? Right. So I always just say, well, you know what my animals eat, just order more of that, which is why I have a huge <laughs> supply. That's really sensible, you know, and, and, and you know, that, that's a really sensible thing. Yeah, so it's interesting, isn't it, where, you know, we, we do think really that we are going to sort of, yeah, be mindful about getting a bit extra food in, but not clearing it out so that nobody else can get it. And it's really interesting actually about um, the Italian side of things and, and us from, from our angles looking at it as in they're on lockdown. But um, in Northern Italy, they are still traveling over to Switzerland to go to work. Wow. 
Okay. So a lot of people don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, from this side of the sea. It looks you, like, We yeah. got the, everybody's singing out their windows because they don't oh, go outside. I know. It's not actually like that. It's interesting. Yeah. And they are allowed to go to the supermarket if they are told and stuff like that. So I think it depends what news channel and things you look at. But I, I actually live partly in London and partly in Basel in Switzerland. We're sort of backwards and forwards. My family's there. So um, and my father-in-law is 100. Um, so wow. he's over there and we have to be very careful of him. But yeah. they are still travelling from Italy, from those borders and, and Alsace and everywhere to go to work because they get more money in Switzerland. So, Wow. <laughs> Hello, okay. world. Yeah, so it's still happening. There, there is still... And funny enough, I went out today and um, it, it was quieter because I, we know we made the same decision of you as you. We just thought, mm, let's go and get a few bits and stock up the freezer just in case. Because if the state are feeding me, they might just send me McDonald's for three weeks. I don't know what they're going to give me, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so that was kind of the thought behind it. So, all right. So, what if we, what if we can't get hold of kibble? What if we can't get canned foods and, and it runs out? Let's just say, like worst case scenario. It's three months lockdown. Don't panic, everyone. We're just like, you know, thinking about this. <laughs> well, you just sent everybody into a tizzy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what could you feed? You know, how could we... Because I was trying to think about it. How we could make... Um, actually, perhaps we should do this. We should do a live on this one, actually. Um, you know, what we could do, you know, could you grab some, you know, oats and some flavour in it with meat? I'm just trying to think of worst case scenario, what we could do. So... What's really interesting is that people get really wigged out about, and, and unfortunately, the pet food, pet feed industry and veterinarians have fueled this fire for years. Yeah. You have to feed a complete and balanced meal to your dog every or cat every single yeah. meal or they're going to die. Well, yeah. that's a bunch of bull. Yeah. So uh, really, whatever you're making for yourself, particularly if it's even remotely healthy, yeah. share yeah. Just share. Uh, I One of my favorite things that I make for my dogs is I scramble up some eggs, I throw some sardines in, a couple scoops of pumpkin, and that's a meal. Yeah. And they think they've died and gone to heaven. Like, wow, you're like the greatest yeah. mom on earth. Um, I don't know what the situation is in Europe, but here I think that all of the big online suppliers – are going to continue to be able to yeah, supply, supply us. So, yeah. So mail order, and that's where the freeze dried foods come in. Mm -hmm. Good, so good, yeah. handy because they're cheap to ship because they're very lightweight. Yeah. They have a very long expiration date. Yeah. So that's something you know. Dial up your phone. Dial up your internet. Find out who you can mail order something yeah. from and have some of that sitting in your pantry. But, you know, if you have to stir up a pot of oatmeal with an egg in it, yay. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the same thing. I think probably you and I, as I said before, I think we're probably the most... You and I may be the most open-minded in the whole um, natural, raw, fresh space. I think uh, not because we're saying... Don't get us wrong, we're not saying go out and feed your pets this. We're just saying if you really have to go there, it's not the end of the world. Please stop. Cause, but so many people are putting pressure on themselves and panicking about yes. what they're feeding and like, oh my God, you know, what will I do? And I can't, you know, and Pookie only eats this or that or whatever. And it's like, you know, like you said, if you're eating healthily, there's no reason why you can't really share, right? So it should be absolute, absolutely fine in, in that way. And, you know, the other thing is, as much as I tell people, do not buy grocery store pet food mm -hmm. because it is, it's pretty much the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Listen, in a pinch, if you can't get anything else, you're not going to kill your pet. Yeah. Because you fed them one bag of kibble that was pretty subpar. Yeah. Um, in a pinch, we're going to have to do what we're going, going to have to do. Yeah. And, um. You know, I, I hope not to get to, because kibble has not crossed the threshold of our household, oh, Lordy, in 20 years. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, if I get to the point where I'm having to do that, <laughs> I know twitchy. it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> I, get, I get twitchy. Yeah. Uh, but if I get to that point, there are a few brands that I can say, well, if I had to, I, this is where I, I would try to find. Yeah. But yeah. if that was not available, listen, I'm not going to let my, my animals starve to death. We happen to be lucky. We own eight chickens. And our chickens are laying eight eggs a day. Wow. Right now, we probably have six dozen eggs in our refrigerator, well, and we get eight going. more every day. So I, I just look at our family and say, well, worse comes worse, we're all eating eggs. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all, you know, it's got everything in it that you need an egg, hasn't it? Let's face it. Gosh. So, Gosh. you know. And we can eat it's, the shell, the lot, the membrane, everything. So it's yes. perfect. If your dogs had to live on one thing and one thing only, yeah. eggs would be it. Yeah. So one question, are you, are you scared? Are you worried? Uh, well, I guess I'm worried enough that we, I was supposed to leave. We, uh, we were going to leave three days from now to drive down to Raleigh, North Carolina. So it's about a six and a half hour drive. Yeah. And it was because I'm su supposed to be interviewed on a TV station there. Right. The good news is there's not a real timeline on this interview. And I think I'm going to ask to postpone or do it by Skype or something else because we were going to go down and visit my daughter and son-in-law and stay with them. Yeah. My problem is that it, in a seven hour drive, we are going to have to stop to use public restrooms. Yeah. That's a long uh, drive. That's a long drive. Yeah. It is. And we'll have my 83 year old mother and then whatever, if we should get exposed to something, then we're staying with my pregnant daughter. And so I look at all that and I think, you know, if I don't have to take these people out, expose them, I'm just minimizing risk. Yeah. So I think I'm scared enough to minimize risk. And, uh, our country is a, week or two behind what's going on in Europe. So I, I think that it is much more widespread in this country than what we realized because we didn't have testing kits available. And now that we have them, of course, the numbers are shooting up very rapidly. Yeah. But we're also seeing some, we don't have that many deaths in this country yet. I think it's 50 or so, but we're seeing differences in who is becoming ill. It, in, Italy in particular seem to really be the older population. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So all we kept hearing was for each decade, 60 and above it, the numbers just go up and up and up. But what we're seeing here is that there are a lot of people in their thirties and forties that are in ICUs already and are very ill and they're not people who have comorbidities. So that to me is very concerning. And We've had a couple of babies test as well, positive. Yes, I saw that. And, you know, part of the problem is our government said, well, anybody who's overseas, you've got to have about a two-day window to get back in this country. And so they were showing on the news this morning that they are bringing them in through, I think, 15 different airports. Those airports are mob scenes, literally thousands of people shoulder to shoulder, breathing on each other, waiting to get tested. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we're putting anybody and all these people who might have a fever, might mm -hmm. have a cough, might not feel well. And literally, we brought in tens of thousands of people from overseas, and we are now dispersing them throughout our communities. And I, I, I just, I have a big concern over that. Yeah. So if we think that we're containing this by having people maintain social distancing, our government just enforced non-social distancing by yeah. crowding everybody by in. By putting everybody, penning them all in and saying, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not going to. My, <laughs> my son is supposed to go back to university, my younger son, Ozzy, and I, and I, I'm, really said to him he was supposed to go back Thursday night for Friday he was here for a few days and I said to see what they're going to say over the weekend can you get your lecture and he said you know I'm worried about my grade you know I, I won't get what I want and, and I'm saying and it's so difficult and I, in the end I said well you're an adult you have to make up your own mind you know it's yes. in Brighton in the UK mm, we've had one or two people oh you can't get toilet roll there oh and then he's, <laughs> and then he came up and said he's and plus the uni had actually been on strike on top of it all so there was no one answering emails there was nothing going on but they've just um all the lessons have gone online for him more or less haven't they i think so that's yeah correct. yeah in, in brighton so that's at yeah. least something i feel a bit better about that i don't know why i just feel like a lot of young people don't wash their hands in one place 
Exactly. Well, uh, most of our schools here and universities are closed already. And but then, uh, do they, this is what they're worried about. Then the, the 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 mom and dads need to go to work. Are they then put with the grandparents? Who are then they, they, you've got the young and old forced together? Yes. There's there's so many problems mm. and. What do you do with – so the city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, huge city, yeah. the mayor did not want to close the schools because about 30 percent of the children don't have food at home. The only meals yes. they get are the breakfast and lunch at school. But the state of Pennsylvania said, nope, all schools are closed. So he had no choice. So, so are they getting the vouchers? Are they getting the vouchers or do they just well, lose that? The school makes more money. <laughs> no, what they did is they opened 30 rec centers where the families can go pick up the food and where the children can go play and be entertained. And I said, they would have been, they're all together anyway. They would have been better off being in school rather than now everybody's out willy nilly. The parents have no one to care for the children. And it's, there's so much confusion right now. And this is, this is uncharted territory, unfortunately. Yeah. So we don't know. We don't we don't know how to handle this. And there's a lot of criticism about governments worldwide. But let's face it, they're flying by the seat of their pants. They're yeah, making it up as they go. Yeah, it's changing moment know. by moment. Yeah. They don't know. That's exactly right. I think it's really easy to sit back and say, Well, oh, this should happen, that should happen, and they're going, Oh, we should be like Italy and Spain and blah blah blah. But they aren't doing exactly what's being portrayed is happening. We all think they're all just because we've seen like some people singing Pavarotti and having a disco or whatever. I'm not saying I'm not being horrible, but there is a small amount of people that are doing that. But the rest of them, there are people out and doing things. I've seen enough reports, and yeah. I know that they're going into Switzerland to work. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know. So our world is just very mobile. It yeah. is extremely mobile. There, there is no way to close borders and oh, no. to quarantine people. Um, we, we can ask people, particularly if you're not feeling well, to stay home. But if you're not feeling well and you live alone and you have no food in your home, what are you going to do? What you should do is call somebody and say, can you drop it off on my doorstep? Yeah. However, some people are not doing that. And I understand there, there's extenuating circumstances for every situation, every yeah. situation is individual, but it's, uh, I, our goal is to slow this thing down. Yeah. It, it's a pandemic. It's going to keep spreading. Yeah. Uh, the, the big thing to keep in mind is it does not affect our pets. So relax uh, on that one, but still keep their immunity high, still look after them, you know, absolutely. fresh food diets and making sure they're yes. fit and healthy, play active games at home, yes. mind games, whatever we can do. Yeah. Well, and we, we want them to stay healthy because you do not want to have to go out to the veterinarian no. unless, you know, it's, yeah. you know, so if we keep them healthy by keeping their immune system well, yeah. by feeding them well, yeah. uh, that will minimize the chances. And, you know, if they're just due for some routine stuff, maybe you can wait a couple oh, yeah. weeks on that. Yeah. And or phone up and say, there's a wobbly tooth, what should I do? Yeah. Let's relax yeah. a bit. So it, it's interesting. I actually did receive an email um, last week and somebody was very panicked and very stressed about the whole thing and they are a kibble feeder and their concern which I can't quite get my head around was what am I going to do if all the kibble runs out I, was, well, I wanted to say me, go there yay are, <laughs> yeah, there are stockpiles of kibble uh, you might have to feed a different kibble you might have to feed a lower quality kibble but there's a lot of pet food on shelves and in warehouses and they'll keep making it believe me these companies can't no more than the small businesses can afford to be without business for more than a week or so. Yeah. The uh, large companies cannot afford to be without business either. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to keep producing yeah. the, that's why the run on the grocery store is kind of silly because yeah. they're going to restock their shelves. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to get more toilet paper. And so the toilet roll factories <laughs> are just making more and more and more, <laughs> you know, that's what they're doing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, um, time for us uh, and especially being in the space that we're in you know in the sort of natural pet food um and you know a natural looking up our pets and in a more natural way we feel um but no judgment if you're watching this and you're thinking wow um but yeah feed your dogs what you can do what you can best you can and that's all we can really do and we i hope we look back on this video in a year's time and we you and i both go goodness 
you know what was all wow. the crazy that could have been <laughs> yeah could have been scary could have been and um, hopefully you've got a bouncing baby in your arms as well yes yes <laughs> be sitting there doing your lives with the baby on your lap so oh, um, <laughs> yeah you know spans and the baby <laughs> i'm sure a daughter would love that thank you so much for joining me i think it's been a blast and i think we we've covered we've put the world to rights and i hope hope some of you feel <laughs> really like we you know we we soothed your fears a little so thank you very much for joining me judy i'm with um, dr judy morgan thank you very much for joining me today and we had a fantastic well i think it was fantastic interview <laughs> and we've put the world to rights we've talked about everything from food to pet health to human health to how to wash your hands COVID-19, <laughs> everything. What I'd like to know is where can people find you, Judy? Where, where can they come and find you? And what, you know, what can they buy from you and stuff like that? Uh, well, I'm pretty easy to find. If you just Google Dr. Judy Morgan, you're, you'll come up with pages of stuff. Yeah. But uh, the easiest way to find me is go to my website, drjudymorgan.com. So drjudymorgan.com. And that has links on there to my Facebook and Instagram and all those fun things. I have written four books, but the there are two that I feel are the most important for pet owners to get tons of information. Yeah. And my my first one was almost accidental, but it's from needles to natural yeah. learning holistic pet healing. I have this. And I have it. it it's uh it's a, it, it the first part is autobiographical how I went from being a traditional vet to uh, and I was really traditional like this this hairy fairy stuff i was just like what are they talking about yeah, so holistic yeah. was not in my wheelhouse i was not talking. get your at sandals all. and your socks off yeah i get it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so yeah. um and it was an interesting journey how it occurred but then at the at the second half of the book it has chapters on liver disease heart disease uh eye disease and some of the problems that we see there's a big chapter on vaccinations the good the bad and the ugly a uh, big chapter on parasites and uh, mm, mm. chemicals that are good bad and ugly yeah. um, so and then natural ways to treat things and how things are diagnosed so just it's kind of just a little encyclopedia of knowledge yeah and because I use food therapy for yeah. so many things um, my belief is that whole foods really will make a difference in yeah. the health of our pets. I'm 100% so, with you on that one. Absolutely. So the fourth book, I finally made my life easy. Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs, Maximizing Health with Whole yeah. Foods, Not Drugs. Yeah. And it's organized kind of the same way. There's diets for heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, whatever, lung disease. Yeah. So, you know, for those of you who are worried about what's my respiratory tract going to be exposed to, yeah. this book will tell you what you and your pets should be eating for yeah. respiratory tract yeah. problems. Because you, 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 you do, you do delve into Chinese. Um, yes. This is all Chinese medicine, medicine yeah. based. Yeah. So Perfect. And it, there's not it, a lot being talked about that openly in, in, you know, even in the natural space, really. Right. So it's really refreshing to have it. But when was that book written? This one is um, a year and a half old, maybe two and a half now. Yeah. Uh, and you got this one. This one's timeless. That is timeless. I was just about to say that. Yeah. It's recipes and Chinese medicine's been around for three thousand years. Exactly. It's timeless. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a bit hard to update, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you've got some yeah. cookery books. Cookery books, haven't you? Uh, so th this one is a cookbook. Yeah. Um, and then I, oh, I don't even have copies of the other one sitting here, but I did a couple fun ones. Uh, one is canine kitchen capers. Yep. It's a recipe book for pets and people, but it's also a comedy. Yeah. So if it's, it's people's foibles with cooking for their pets and, oh yeah, I spent three days on that and totally forgot to feed my family. Uh, those kinds of stories. Yeah. Uh, you know, blowing up, I, I mean, I broke our KitchenAid mixer on a piece of beef trachea cartilage get things like that i've we, been there once or twice yeah i know what you mean we, yeah. <laughs> we decided to do a for that book we did a crazy thing one christmas eve i a couple days before i said hey honey what is that thing that they do on christmas eve 
And he said, oh, you mean the Feast of the Seven Fishes? So I actually, in the middle of the night, was on Facebook messaging with my Italian friends, asking them how I made something for the Feast of the Seven Fishes. And then the next day, we were out at the store buying octopus and, you know, all these weird things that we've never cooked, that we didn't know anything about, but we made a Feast of the Seven Fishes for the dogs. I think, I actually think me and you should do a show together. I think this would be epic. Me and you would be there all day going, hey, we could, all we could do is, Florian, what do you think about this? I'll throw it out to you there. He's going, like, what? We just, we just put a load of cameras on us and we just spend 24 hours cooking stuff making stuff oh, really? <laughs> and, we, and we just go here you all go there you go so if this all goes wild we'll do like a 24 hour cookathon and we'll just do it from oh, there, there yeah <laughs> yeah i've always wanted to do a show where i go into people's houses because when i first met hugh's family down and we were visiting in san antonio first yeah. time meeting them he was yeah. you know took to texas to meet everybody yeah and i walk in and they've got this old, old dog, and then uh, like a six-month-old puppy. And I look over, and there's the bowl of dry, crappy kibble in the yeah, corner. Yeah. And it wasn't even a good brand. And they were complaining that their old dog was really slowing down. She wasn't eating well, oh. and she was arthritic. And I looked at them, and I said, you want to change that? Oh, really? <laughs> and <does>. I said, yes, <laughs> we need to make food for the dogs. So here we've got the whole family. And I go over and open their freezer and I start pulling things out of the freezer. And before you know it, his sister-in-law and I are there making pot after pot after pot of food for the dogs. Yeah. They start feeding this to the dogs and the dogs are like, we don't know who this lady is, but she's like the best thing ever that walked into this <laughs> She house. can come back. <laughs> Brilliant. And, you know, we made enough food for a month or two for their dogs. Wow. And, yeah. you know, they were sending us messages saying, wow, this old dog, she's like, she's like a new dog again. So I've always wanted to have this show where, you know, if the cameras follow me around. I walk into people's houses and I'm like, well, what's in your pantry? <laughs> you know? Do you know what? This is, this is my absolute dream. But okay, we'll have to go to some networks. Anyone out there? No, any, no anyone. We're going to do this. My, my yeah. thing is, is I always go to people and I go, like, can I look in your cupboards? I love looking in the cupboards. <laughs> yeah, and then we can go around markets in Italy and we can look at food there and we can go all around okay. and go all around Europe and then help help them to make their dogs' lives better by feeding them a fresh food diet. And just it's just in the store cupboard, isn't it? It's just not a big deal. Exactly. And every day, more or less, you do a live. That where we yeah. can come and follow, yeah? Monday through Friday on my Facebook page, Judy yeah. Morgan DVF. Yeah. So, you know, there's lots of ways to find me. I have tons of blogs, tons. I have a bunch of videos on YouTube. They're not as well labeled. I don't play there as much. Yeah. Uh, but we we do uh, live interviews now we're starting to yeah, do. Good. And on drjudymorgan.com, we have a huge store yeah. with my private branded products as well as some of the best natural products that we have found you've available you've got loads you've got loads of stuff on there haven't you and can we and get it in the, can we get it in europe our, as well yes our new platform will actually take orders overseas which has been a huge Bonus. Are you listening, everybody? Are you listening? It used to be US <laughs> only, and I got so many complaints. Yeah. So we are on a new platform, and it will take international orders. Sometimes the shipping is a little bit of a killer, if you're, especially if you're ordering heavy things. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but and, you know what? When we want something, we want something, and that's, that's how it goes. And I think you know, we're all crazy enough with our dogs to know to understand that side of it. So, yeah, I think that's really important. They're on Amazon. So, yeah. uh, you know, if they want the books, that that's really simple. They're on Amazon. So that's, you know, if yeah, you have Amazon, easy to get hold on. Yeah, so. yeah. And you actually work, don't you, as well? I have two clinics. <laughs> I have two clinics. I have two online stores. Uh, I am writing my fifth book right now. Wow. And, uh, you know, waiting for the grandbaby to arrive in a couple of months. So, yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of stuff going on. So you just, so you have a lot of spare time at the moment? Oh, yeah, sure, tons. <laughs> well, I don't know. If we're all in lockdown, I might have a lot more spare time. <laughs> well, it'll be on here all the time. We'd just be doing, like, you know, like, like gamers have these live streams that go on for, like, 12 days or something. We'd be like that, exactly. just talking everything we know. Well, we're just... just... Everybody I can interview. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, look, thank you for thank you for the interview today. It's been absolutely epic, and I can't wait for you all to see it. We've, we've a bit of editing going on, but it'll be ready for you all to see. Um, and hopefully you can come on and do a live on holistic dog care or natural canine kitchen at some point. It'd be nice to see you. Whatever Lots you of want. love, and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Bye.